Champions, the semi-finals on day seven, and of course the finals on day eight. Here are the 16 teams that have qualified either by world ranking or through continental championships. Group A, China, Denmark, Singapore, Egypt, Group B, Indonesia, Thailand, Germany, Canada, Malaysia, Chinese Taipei, India and Australia in Group C, Japan, South Korea, France and England in Group D. This is the schedule for today. Two um, sessions, the morning session, we'll see Korea versus France here on Court 2 and uh, that will be followed at 5 p.m. by Denmark versus Singapore. <laughs> So looking at the Korea team list, very strong squad offered up by Korea, very strong in doubles of course and women's singles, featuring uh, An Se Young, the hottest property in women's singles right now, uh, but they have a vulnerability relatively and that's of course in men's singles. The French team now. There's much to do for Lucas Corvey, Tom Gekel, uh, Delphine Delarue, and Margot Lambert. Of course, some big names there as well, but they're going to have to be playing out of their skins, especially in this, uh, in this first tie for them. It's all about points on the board, not dropping games, and really about the manner of your win if you're going to win in these five match ties. And that is the order of play on court two. We're going to be starting off with the mixed doubles. Kim Won Ho, Jung Na Eun versus Tom Nikel and Delphine De Roo. Men's singles after that, Lee Yun Gyu versus Christo Popov. An Se Young and uh, Ji Ju Fei in the women's singles. Kang and Seo take on Corvey and Laba in the men's doubles after that. And the tie will be rounded off by Kim and Kong in the women's doubles, taking on Lambert and Tran. of action expected from this first time. And just about ready now for our mixed doubles to come into this electric arena. Much expected from this first match in the tie. Could go either way. Kim on Ho, Chong Na and 14th in the world right now. Taking on Kikel and Del Rue that are ranked fifth. Good to see a nice exchange of national gift, shall we say, and ready for the coin toss. As you can see, a first meeting between these two pairs, and it's really going to set the tone for this tie. France definitely looking to hopefully score a couple of points off the mixed doubles and the men's singles to kick off this tie. 
then they're going to have to batten down the hatches and um, really try and get the best they can out of the women's singles, of course, men's doubles and women's doubles. Korea relatively stronger in those three disciplines, but that's what the Sudirman Cup is all about. The real team efforts, a really 360 degree um, look at badminton in terms of all five disciplines playing. As we look at Delphine Delru, 24 years old now, and as you can see, ranked sixth. They were silver medalists at the 2021 and 2023 European Mixed Team Championships. That's one of the continental, continental championships that can lead to qualifications. Two titles and four runner-up positions on the BWF World Tour. The Swiss Open and the Indonesian Masters. There's Tom Gekel, 24-year-old partner. What they're going to have to do is be very aggressive, very fast, against the Korean pair. And here's Kim Won Ho. Twenty-three years old now. She's currently ranked ninth in the world, but also plays men's doubles and mixed doubles. Very versatile player. One of these players that can read the game, start seeing these angles cross-court from his position at the back of the court, where he usually plays. And of course, Jong Na Eun cleaning up at the net, 22 years old, born in Seoul. And together, they are quite the formidable combination. And they were, of course, part of the gold medal winning squad in the 2017 edition, Gold Coast. Bronze at the 2021 edition in Finland. Ready to most play. recently, uh, of course, uh, finalists at the German Open this year. So, umpire for this one, Mansuri Salat Jachian. Joined by our service judge, Henrik Boris Olsen. Three courts in action for this first day opening session. Groups C, D, and A will be starting their campaigns throughout today. Chinese Taipei taking on India on another court. Malaysia taking on Australia on another court. That's in the morning session. Then Japan, England, Denmark, Singapore, and China, Egypt set for this evening session. Absolutely fantastic lineup of badminton for all the fans who have joined us here at the Shuzhou Olympic Center. Now and it's going to be Delphine Del Rue by the looks of it. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, friends represented by Tom Jekyll and Delphine Del Rue. And on my left, Korea represented by Kim Bon Hu and Jung Na Un. Friends to serve Delphine Del Rue to Jung Na Un. Love on, play. First point, first blood to the Service Koreans. Over. One love. from Kim Won Ho and that's uh, to him right side of the net so in this group stage over the next five days whether 
you win or lose your tie. It's all about scoring points. Hopefully not conceding any games because all those statistics will come down to the wire and be very, very valuable at the end of the group stage. We need to differentiate teams. Two from each group, of course, making their way into the quarterfinals. <laughs> Too fast from Kim Won Ho. from Cal and Del Rue. Cal on the attack, Del Rue backing him up. Three all. couple of times that was obviously the first time uh, this event trying to play that point off the ground Delphine might work against some other opponents but not against Kim Wonho who once again in that point found that angle I was talking about he's got such a great reading of the game very aware of what's going on you could find these long angles cross court and that's it's been a great source of points for him. Four, three. And it's all about strategy when it comes to the team events. France are going to be looking, hopefully, to get a point off this mixed doubles. Christo Popov to step up in another point in men's singles, and then hopefully snatch a point in one of the three doubles disciplines the last two I should say women's singles it's probably going to go the way of Ansa Young the form that she's been in that's Lee So He it's also been in great form very strong squad from the Koreans four time winners of the Sudirman Cup of course in 1991 1993 2003 and 2017 one of only three nations to have ever lifted the prestigious title and Kim Won Ho just running the show Earlier, as the Koreans take a two-point lead here, our first lead of the match. Kim Won Ho very versatile in both men's doubles and mixed doubles. And what that means is that he's acutely aware of his movement on court. The movement on court for a mixed doubles player versus the men's doubles player, very much different. So he knows the position he's supposed to be playing in. First mid-game interval of the tournament on court two. Korean still two points ahead. And that's what 
happens when you reverse roles in mixed doubles in Chong Na Eun, the shorter female player at the back with the big smashes, means that if anything is lifted too high, just like that, you've got a big, big player up front to smash it down with a steep angle. That's exactly what Kim Won Ho did. Nice from Delphine Del Rue. Again, Kim Wonho coming in with the pressure. And looking good for this four-point lead. Kim and Jong. Great work from Wonho. It's been instrumental in carving out this first advantage. that long. 11-6 so, interval. 11-6 at the mid-game interval. And look at that last point. Nicely left. And while Gikel and Del Rue do have to pick up the tempo, obviously, they do have to force a fast game. Sometimes you can get caught up in that moment and forget that very flat, very long. Part two, 20 seconds. Part so two, seven 20 minutes. seconds. That's the indicator of the pace that we've seen so far. Huh? The first 17 huh? points. Fighting hard for this first game. Play. <laughs> Service over. Seven. Okay, Chong Na Eun just moved a little too quickly for Kim Won Ho there. See him moving across now, there, and that just broke their formation a little. And she knows that. was a very good pattern of play Two, by Kim and Jong. Varying up the shots of this guy's from the back line and then... Well, I think Kim Won Ho was just talking to the umpire about the general sound level. Well, as he was told, there's not much you can do about the Screaming passionate Bampton fans have all flopped here. Oh, that's great from Kim Jong Un. Intercepted well. Gets the approving nod from 
new badminton bench for Korea. Not really a bench, of course. It's just the really team paddock. Good angle, though, found there by Kim Jong un. Great defense from Jong-un as well. So both Korean players have 14, fired themselves up. Still a little more rhythm and compact coordination needed from the French pair, I think. Especially if they're going to overturn this seven-point deficit. This first game just generally looking like it's rolling towards Korea. Leave it that high, then man of the size and ability of Tom Dickel is going to finish that off. That's exactly what he did. No choice really for Jong Un to leave that lift. This for a rally. Oh, well won by Del Rue. That rally had absolutely everything in it. Fast, flat over the net. Deception. And some unique shots in the middle of that. In the end, just hooked down by Del Rue. from that distance. from Kim Won Ho and Tom Bikel. Wow, I do love watching mixed doubles played at this speed. Like all four players are trying to keep up with that pace. It was a bit of a slip that led to that. Oh, Tom Bikel can feel a bit aggrieved there. Crucial point to it, 15-10. Jong Bucks intercepted well by Del Rue yeah, and they are clawing this back. Nice 
win back the serve. Start putting more pressure on this scoreline. stand from Gikel and Del Rue after being down by as much as seven they've just made sure that if they lose serve they win it back almost immediately oh, leaving some space that was unlucky and Delarue just looked a little bit too tight in their formation there. They were leaving some space on the right-hand side. I think Kim Wonho saw that, but in the end, didn't need to make anything of it. 17-12. So he and Bekana in the players area. They're not actually selected for this first round. That's a strength and depth that Korea has. Again, Gikel finds a space right down the middle. Oh, they're running out of points, the French pair in this first game. But it bodes well for the second. And of course, the rest of the match that they are finding space frequently enough, scoring frequently enough. Remember, they are the higher ranked pair. Oh, great shot! And that's exactly why they hit those heights of ranking. Great cross court there. Uh, Kim and Jong have had a decent run recently. down to two now. here in this first game I still think with, a, with just two points to win Kim and Jong are going to find a way but let's see
intercepted well by Kim Won-ho. Service over. 20 game point, 17. So, three game points. too high so a chance for Bikel and Delru. First game in the bag for them, 22 minutes. First game won by Korea, 21-18. 21-18. Nice from Kim Jong-un. Then it was Kim Won-ho just stretching, finding that corner. Look at his court coverage here. He's at one side, he's at the other. Closer to the first point in this tie. And it hasn't been one way traffic for either pair, really. It's been good stands made by both. Quality shot making as well. Court 220 seconds. Court 220 seconds. Pairs looking in good spirits. So we get on court for game two. And opening match. It's opening tie. Korea versus France. Group D. Japan and England, the other two teams in this group. Second game. Facing off Love on. this evening. Play. Again from the Koreans. With Chung Na and just adding that extra emphasis to some of the big shots being executed by Kim Won Ho at the back. There's a good example of that. And again, just intercepts the return. Thank you. Just making those returns faster One. and harder no. for the French pair.
concerning point for the French pair right now has been that they haven't actually had their own lead so far in this match. They did a great job of clawing back a seven-point deficit in the first game, but I'm sure they'd feel a lot better if they two or three points ahead. That's good rotation and a good finish from Tom Gickel. Exactly what she does really, really well. Just lurks around the nets. Just finds those opportunities to intercept. And it cuts down the time reaction time for opponents. If, it, if done well, have to be you have to have the reflexes of a cat to return them. by Kim Won Ho. That was a killing opportunity. It wasn't the tightest of shots from Jong Nyan, but it was enough. Three point lead in the second. again inverted rolls for the Koreans and it's very useful for a pair to be able to do that not just rotate to cover court area of course but to rotate different roles look at that Jong Nguyen comfortable on the back line taking the big hits oh, well that's a beautiful return from Gikel Kim Won Ho on the deck. Service over. Look at that. Credit where credit's due. That was for where he was on the court. That's actually amazing that Won Ho even got half a racket on that. That looked like an outright clear winner. But he's very fast at okay. getting around courts. Just, just a millisecond earlier, he may have been able to get a good lift off that. Four, six. Service fault. There was a real chance to get closer. Service over. Nicely finished by Gikel and 
I think they were aware that that was coming. Definitely see John Nairn moving in that direction. Didn't expect it to be so deep. It's great stuff from Tom Gekel. That's in. Challenge, our first challenge on court two coming. 50-50. Actually, I did think that looked on the edge of the line if if it is in. Edge of the line. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Oh, it was a good shot. Service over. There's no doubt. But still, three-point leads. Play. And this is the pressure cooker type atmosphere that the Sudirman Cup finals always brings with it. Those cheers, of course, for other big badminton stars on other courts. But it really is a who's who of badminton. This tournament has been since its inception in 1989. China, of course, the undisputed uh, champions, 12 titles looking for their 13th on home soil. In fact, they've never, ever lost a Sudirman Cup when it has been hosted five times in China. So we're going to hope to keep that stat going. Meanwhile, Mikel and Del Rue have done fantastically well here on court two, tying it up at eight apiece. Big serve. And followed up well. Wow. First lead of the match for Kekel and Del Rue. Let's see whether they can build on it. Intercepted by Del Rue right down the middle. Oh, hook smash. Hardly any lift off the court, but very steep angle. Very fast. challenge coming and that one did look out but again it will be very much right on the edge of the line let's have a look at it here oh that is very tough Shuttle right down the middle. One challenge remaining. 11 8 interval. So, second mid game interval, and this has been much better for Gikel and Del Rue, and of course the French team. A little bit of concern on the Korean coaches' faces, but I think for the neutral, it's safe to say that this was always going to be 
tough match to open up with. Mikel and Del Rue definitely finding their usual rhythm now. Part two, 20 seconds. Part two, 20 seconds. <laughs> It just looks like the initiative and the speed is all moved towards the front side of the court. They're getting great shots in. That may have been long. Sprightly now, Gikel and Delroo. Looking to get on the attack in the rallies as soon as possible, and when they do, alternating, following each other up well. It's creating quite the wall for Kim and Jong to negotiate around in terms of scoring. Because they're immediately into the flat defence, there's not much you can start doing. They're going to have to start. Playing the angles a bit more, maybe. Looking for a mistake just like that. Great play from J.K. and Dolru. And you could just see that defensive formation of the Koreans beginning to crumble. And these wide cross courts coming in left and right. Now, whoever does win this and whoever gives their nation that first point has been wonderfully entertaining so far. Tip of the 
remember. So the Demon Cup is all about stats in the group stage. The Koreans would be really looking to do this in straight games, not drop a game. Ideally, drop as many, as little, as few points as possible. All about points for, points against, games for, games against. All. It was a great lead, but it was also a great comeback from Kim and Jong. Good <laughs> smash again, right down the middle from Delphine Del Rue. Good enough. what happened there. Definition of a cross court shot. I think Delphine may have actually hit a head there. Well, that was strange. It looks like I have tripped a head on something. Always that is a priority in any sport, but she looks like it's okay. Just rubbed it off and seems to be fine. Oh, 17 15. It's not over yet at all, based on the performance we've seen of and Delru in the second game where they have had their leads definitely opened up their play oh, once again 18, right down the middle that's the angle I was talking about man just to read that as the space opens up you can see it translated into a great winner oh. 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 tries the same but a bit long so Kim and Jong now two points away from a first tie point for Korea.
valiant stuff from Delphine Delru. That's the third time that she's been defending from the ground. So, five match points. Kim Wonho stepping out of his skin there in that last point, just hammering home potential winners and then actual winner. Yeah, that's one match point saved. And that's two. Oh, good miss me. <laughs> Talk about leaving it to the last minute. said France uh, one of the teams in the hunt but looking to be the first non-Asian country to lift the Sudirman Cup Denmark have of course medaled but no non-Asian country has won it before I'll tell you one thing even if they get this oh that's a shame that's a shame in the end the service error finishes the game and the match 21 18 21 17 and Kim and Jong have done their duty straight games win match won by Korea 21 18 21 17 they had some problems along the way against the higher ranked opponents of course But a service error in the end leads to fist bumps to their teammates. Certainly faced some problems, and there's confirmation of that in 48 minutes. Definitely wasn't a walk in the park or in any way. A one-sided affair, very entertaining mixed doubles to kick off the tie. Coming up next, men's singles, Mi Yun Gyu versus Christo Popov. Do stay with us for that.
So welcome back to the Sudirman Cup day one. Opening ties here on the on court two. And this is what the state of play looks like right now. Great straight games win for Kim Won Ho and Jong Na Eun. And up next it's the men's singles, Christo Popov taking on Lee Yun Gyu. I'll be followed by the women's singles, men's doubles and women's doubles still to come. But Korea with a one point lead. Well, time for the men's singles. And still not, uh, not a point for the French team to be losing heart in any way. They would have, of course, loved to have just nicked that mixed doubles to kick off the tie. And then, of course, a win here for Christo Popov, 38th in the world against the relatively uh, lower-ranked league and you. Means that it would have been 2-0 up, but they can still tie it up here, 1-1. First meeting between both of them, and they're ready for the coin toss. So Lee Yun Gyu is flying the flag for Korea in one of the disciplines that, strangely, they are not that um, formidable in, I should say. And so Christo Popov here, the 21-year-old, 38th in the world, has a great chance of getting that first point in for France if he can. On paper, definitely the more powerful. The good news, you can see, ranked 215th in the world. It's been as high as 176, 25 years old now. And was part of the mixed team for Korea in the mixed team championships in February. And that was in Dubai. And that point, he actually lost to. Lei Lanzi and Chico Dui Wodoyo from China and Indonesia. But he did in the round robin stage pull off a win against Lo Kian Yu, the former world champion. So there are some skills in there for him to work on. But this might be very aggressive display from Popov as France search for that opening point. That's really the great part about the Sudirman Cup Finals and any mixed team championships. Because it's not just about the strategy of the player in the game and the match, but also how that match fits into the larger strategy of the whole team over the course of the time. The players love the format, the fans love it as Ready well. to play. So about ready to get underway here. Under the watchful eyes of Bert Van Horenbeek, this umpire. And our service judge, Jaten Bartz. Tough challenge for Lee Gun Yu. Maybe not winning the match, he might be able to do that, but definitely winning in straight games uh, with favorable point distribution in terms of the scoreline. Well, that could be a bit tougher in that. You really do need to push the point home. And I think that's exactly what Christo Popov is planning to do. Quarter finalist at the Swiss Open, Christo, recently. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, France. <laughs> 
represented by Kisto Popo. And on my left, Korea, represented by Lee Yoon Gyu. France to serve, Lovo, play. So here we go, match two. Opening tie for Korea versus France. Service over, one love. from pop off and it's an immediate lead for Lee. Just about to say, these opening three points were really dictated by errors three, more than anything one. else. But that great cross court outright winner from Lee. Nice idea from Lee. Quite pull it off. really developed rally from both players and it was a good one Just his way into the lead. Five, three. And pop off moving into another gear. Which is what top 50 players, top 40 players have over players beneath them in terms of ranking. Those rankings are hardly ever off the mark. Really, it's a question of whether the player plays to that ranking, matches the results that he's got. And in this case, Popov beginning to open up the Six, big shots down three. the line. and reward on these mid-court drives. Five-point lead now, unanswered five points. 
Well, you're just snatching a lot of these returns. And that is having an effect on the accuracy of it. That one long. It's all playing into the strategy and plan of pop off. Ten, four. Who is now cruising towards the mid game interval in this first game? Ambitious defense from Yungu, but hardly ever really. There's Christoph Popov showing some of these skills that just six minutes it took him to get to that mid game interval. There's a big success on the junior circuit. Popov, world junior number one, three years ago. Great rally from both players. Oh, it's a much better rally from Lee Yun Gyu. Really in control. So, Christo Popov with the first real challenge he's had in terms of rallies. As I was just saying, world junior champion Popov comes from a family of badminton players. His father actually played for the Bulgarian national team. And of course, we all know his elder brother, Toma Junior Popov, also a European junior champion. Serves over. Drill five. Another great winner down the line. Fourteen, five. 
15-5. Taking a 15-5 lead here. Did say it was going to be a tough challenge for Lee and Gu. Both players now Six, definitely eight, have five. warmed up. Ahead now, and Five. this is the exact kind of scoreline that any pair or player would want to win by if they can, if he can continue this. But in terms of, as I was saying, the stats of the group stage that run your campaign Six, really in the Sudirman Cup finals, Six, straight games 17. lost with the minimum amount of points one with the maximum amount of points great start that's not a wonderful shot difficult to power that cross court drive in it was a half smash but the shuttle was just off his shoulder behind him so it's Difficult take. 18 6. chance for Yan Gyu. The question really is not just about having the chance but what he can do with it. Pop off very, very effective uh, intercepting. Playing a lot of these transitional shots. That's a great winner. Yes, transitional shots, being on the defensive foot, but still managing with your attacking hand to change the point of attack and start really asking some questions. And he's very good at that. Pop off. And the pace of this men's singles second match means that he's going to have the opportunity to do that a lot more. But still looking very strong this opening game. Yeah, again, taking it well behind him. Backward mobility. Ability to shuffle himself back. So good. That's good hook that back. Well done. points available 12 in fact Yeah. 
great footwork again from Popoff and First game, one by Trump, just set up the point eight. nicely before looking for that kill into the front court. Well done, 21-8 in just 15 minutes. This is the shot. It's all about that hitting zone just above the player and you can see here when he's where he's taking the shuttle from. It's great at getting back just behind it. Firing it back with some true promise. 15 minutes, 21-8 in France. Back in this tie. more important as I said it's the fact that win or lose this tie it's all part of group stage campaign so France have just got their first game and a good one as well in terms of point differential but they would love to try and get another couple of points schedule for them I can tell you now, while this is happening, it's all about men's singles on the other courts as well. Or singles, I should say, on the other courts. As the ties move forward once again. C and D. Group C and D in action this morning. Courts 1 to 3 here at the Suzhou Olympic Sports Centre. Chinese Taipei taking on India and Malaysia versus Australia. The other two ties in this morning session to kick off a week of well, five days at least of group stages so I'm ready to get on the way now for the game two seen from this morning's action so far it looks like there is a slight drift on court that's playing well on your screens from top to bottom which means view is now in the better relatively better side getting into it just seems to be that way but as I said the quality of play the standard of professionalism from these badminton players these days means significant that is anymore you know how to counter that's nice interception by Liam Gu at the net Two love. just almost as if to prove what I was saying shows you that he's yes. equally adept at smashing either side of the court. Well, it would seem that his coaches have told him to just be a lot more aggressive. He's really straight onto the attack now in this second game. Wasting no time playing out rallies. There you go again. That one wide though. Good plan.
it's in. So he really is he. Got himself a two point lead, but he's maintaining it under some pressure from Popov. Who in that point was equaling that attack. front foot for the Yun Gu. Oh, great cross court from Popov. He's got Lee on the run here. Wow. Saved by the net. Five, three. Great example there of just how that one crisp cross court shot can really change the pattern of play change the impetus of the point important to have that weapon in your arsenal as a player That was moving the other way. Four, five, Four, five closing in. Interception by Popov. Oh. It really does look like Popov has that extra gear he needs to get into. Defending very well. Subtlest of touches there. Just enough. So back in the lead and on serve. Forcing Yun Gyu into the defensive position. Yeah, plenty of opportunities after that to kill it. Oh, 
Oh, of course, this is a much better performance from Yin Yu than the first game. And if he can maintain that, we'll have a game back. Possibly two. And that just sets up their talismanic force in the women's singles, An So Young. Who's up next? And called in, well Nine, gauged. Seven. France, one of those European sides, Denmark, France, England and Germany, they're all qualified from the 2023 European mixed team badminton championships. We're running alongside the Asian mixed team championships as well, around like February this year, earlier. South Korea, India and Thailand, the qualifying teams from the Asian mixed team championships by merit of China, of course, winning it and therefore giving an extra place up. China beginning their title defense and of course their search for a 13th title later on this evening against Ten, Egypt eight. who by the way also qualified from the all Africa team championships that also took place in February Great play from Gunyu. Needs to kill this point off soon if he can. Well, he's trying. Ambitious backhand clear from Popov and Lee and Gu can take great satisfaction in this first half of the second game. 11-8 at the mid-game interval. You just got the feeling in this point that he's going to have to kill it soon. A mistake from Popov in the end from a very ambitious backhand clear. It looked like a backhand drop shot, actually. You don't see those very often. But he started hustling. Court two, 20 seconds. Court two, 20 seconds. Great, great work from the, as I said, the Achilles heel in the Korean team men's singles. It's very strange if you think about it with that. Proficiency in women's eight. singles and the doubles with Kim and Kong and Kang and Seo. Doubles even as we saw earlier. It's very weird. It's strange that less singles players, men's singles players coming out of Korea. So he is shouldering an entire category. Baseline. Really? Ian Hughes. So that lead of his down to two points. Pop off with the serve. Cut that back down to one. Thank you. 
Still managing to keep his head up off the scoreline. Combination of some winners, but also putting Popov in a situation just like that backhand clear where he's got a pretty good chance of getting through. 14 10. Sets himself up nicely. Good jump. Sideways. Tilt to the body. And it's that full twist of the abdomen, the shoulder, and the elbow to get as much power as you can into that swing. That's what jump smashing is all about. himself too far forward. Lee and Yu. That's wide. Challenge coming, but I don't Korea think he's going to be too happy with the result. Out. Looked pretty clearly out from up here. And it is. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. 13-14. And just like that, that lead so hard won by Lee and Yu has been dissolved away by Popoff, who's now going to be looking to make this a straight game to win if he can. Oh, that's great. Again. The positioning 15, of where he was. 14. Have a look at this. Scissor split just lightly jumps off the ground, but enough. 15 14. from pop off the mistake comes in the end from Yun Bu and it has been a string of unanswered points here on court two for the French men's singles player
deep, deep defending from Ian View, and it was picked off by Popoff. Smart play again from Christo. That lift there. See him do the 360 turn, trying to get back. It was a pretty decent return, all in all. And it was enough for him to just drive it down. Steep angle. 17 14. He's really tried his best, Ian Gu, in the second game. But he has been outmatched and outclassed by Christo Popov in the last six points, maybe seven. He's been on his game. Well left. 16, 17. It's an important skill, wherever you are on the world ranking board, to know that's gone too long. Pop off playing on what seems to be the driftiest side that could have very easily been affected by that. And all is not lost yet for the young Korean. But these are crucial points now. Trademark strengths. Did well to get a racket to it. different from the start of the second game when we really saw Ian Gu come out and just get straight onto the attack within a couple of shots but now facing four match points and France with good chance here at a straight games win and get their first point on the board in the tie. at the beginning of this game, as I was saying, he came out very attacking-minded, tried his best, but Popoff has managed to weave in excellent defensive play. Clawed his way back, 14-all. Now has more match points, and I'm sure it's going to be one of these cross-court winners. It's another one saved.
wanted it so badly. Immediately on the attack. And he takes the second game. 21-18. 41 minutes on court. For men singles. And the tie score now. Match won by France. 21-8, 21-18. There's confirmation of that. 21-8, 21-18, France back on in the tie. One apiece. Still more to come, of course, in this opening tie on day one between Korea and France. And up next, it's the women's singles, Anse Young versus Shi Jufei. So back here at court two, session one, as you can see, we are now uh, well into this tie and it's one apiece to um, between France and Korea. Up next is the women's singles, Ansa Young versus Shi Jufei. Shi Jufei definitely the underdog in this third match of the tie, simply because of the stellar form of Ansa Young. Players should be coming out to the arena soon. That's a great shot there of the three courts in action here at the Shizhou Olympic Sports Center. on court very soon key turning point in the tie of course at one apiece 
Se Yong should be delivering that second point for Korea. But this is also unknown territory for her against the Chinese born French badminton player. Xi Zhu Fei was actually born in Nanjing. France in 2014 and got her French citizenship in 2018 and since then been representing France. Ladies and gentlemen, for the on the sixth Mark Seo from Korea, Xi Xu from France. Cao Yuan, from the Russian Army, from the Russian Army, from the Russian Army, from the Ready for the coin toss. As you can see there, have actually met about three years ago. And so Young coming through in straight games 21 11, 21 12. And that's hopefully, in her mind, what she's going to be doing again. Well, what can you say about this young lady? Except for the fact that she's made six finals in 2023 already. And um, while well, she won the All England, Indonesian Masters, the India Open, was runner-up at the German Open, the Malaysia Open, and of course, I'm guessing through the exertion of all those finals, was a finalist at the recent Badminton Asia Championships in Dubai. Lost out to Tai Tzu Ying and looked to be honest very tired. Ranking second in the world right now, 21 years old, and skills just brimming with talent really it's really taken her game to another level this year and her opponent 31 years old now Xi Xu Fei as I said born in Nanjing China currently ranked 46th in the world and has had some success at European mixed team championship level was silver medalist in Fanta and uh, just earlier this year of course the EMTC 21 and 23 silver medalist and was runner-up at the Dutch Open in 2018, near Blickfeldt, and has had some success on the International Challenge Series, six titles and two runners-up. Definitely going to find it hard. Hans Young has had a bit of time now to, not well, a couple of weeks since her last final is how you're going to look at it. But she knows the amount of significance this match could have on the tie. Very much the centerpiece of the Korea national team strategy. Han Se Young delivering a point in women's singles. Ready to play. Umpire for this one, Henrik Boas Olsen. And he's joined by our service judge, Sure Sarat Jachian. So 1-1 one, one on the tie. She should play the clear underdog. Can she make the headline here? Or will it be the steamrolling season that An Se Yong is having continuing? Thank you. Either way, it's going to be some great badminton on show for the fans packed in here at the Olympic Centre and of course everybody watching from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Korea represented by An Se Yong. And on my left, France represented by Xi Zhifei. 
trying to serve. Love all. Play. Sets over. One love. Early errors. Shi Jufei waits for two early points for Sleyong. This is added. Great cross court winner to that. Love. for Xi Jufei. Two, a couple of three. shots going a little bit stray for Anse Young and it's a great chance. Trying to keep pace with the scoreline. Drop from three, four. Xu Feng. Have to win back the serve. Another great cross court drop from the French player. Not quite enough to win the initiative of the point. Still on the defensive very much. And that's just sublime. Five, three. The skies drop shot to the left. Look at the quality of this shot. So much about the setup. That was some great recovery as well. accepting that that was indeed out. It's a very nice setup. Seven, three. 
shoot you face. Just couldn't find the killing blow at the end of it. But this policy of looking for winners at midcourt seems to be at least stretching on Se Yong. She has to get down very low. to be a little bit more clinical. Eight, so I think that is the driftier side. Just finding a bit of trouble with her lengths right now, distance especially wide. Backline. But as I said, she's been finding far better rewards at midcourt. If, of course, she's allowed to control the points, which right now hasn't been happening. And as we approach the first mid-game interval, it is... Once again, Anse Young steamrolling through, but helped by a few mistakes. That's a great winner. That screen that you're hearing from the Chinese Taipei versus India Thai. Big stars every day here. In group stages. That was Xiao Tian Chen, in fact. Winning this match against HS Pranoy. It's almost too much for Badminton fans around the world to get in touch with and keep up to date with. But we're going to try our best over here to do it. 11 3, 7 minutes is all it took, and Ansel Young halfway to delivering another point for Korea. is finding the baseline in the backcourt troublesome to hit and it really does cut down your options not just against any player but of course against Anse Young well he's only got half the court to try and win off forced into defending and then the variety of the shot from Anse Young just again absolutely crisp She was on the back foot. Ah! Oh, big slip. Getting a mop down as you'd expect. Service back with um, Se Young into her closing sequence for this first game. 15, four. Now 
Shih Fei can really, or should try at least not to let her head droop after this. Because this really is what we've been seeing a lot of from Anse Young all oh. year. During that point, just saw angle to angle moving her opponent side to side. chance for Xi Fei. she gets the serve back but it's a long long uphill climb uh, if she's got any kind of dreams of this first game over 19-6 again playing to the feet almost impossible to retrieve and two points away from the first game Challenge coming. Game point six. Fourteen game points. And she only needed one of them. Well, there is a challenge coming in. And you know what? I actually think she might have a shout here. That looked just shading the edge of the line. Shading it. Out. Well out. Service over. Seven. Great 20. spirit. Play. Being shown. Every point counts. Out. Game. Oh, very First high, game. deep lift Bye -bye serve. Korea. 21. And that turns out to be the deciding factor in the first game. So 13 minutes played, 21-7. That was close, as you can see from there. So young, 14 minutes, 21-7 up looking in formidable form as she has done all year but there's always places you can improve your game on the day and that's what your coaches are there for
on the outside of the court. Well, it's more about how do you break Alice Young out of her rhythm. Okay. The easiest way, of course, is to do up the tempo, but that really puts some pressure on yourself as well, especially against a player that can return the way Ansa Young can. Court two, 20 seconds. Court two, 20 seconds. Second game. Love all. Play. Sends over one love. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> over 1-0. Oh. Oh, she didn't have to do much. Waited for the error. She's benefited a lot from errors from the French side. But she's also capable of doing that. Two, Left it one. too high that time, <laughs> Shizhou <laughs> Fei. Using the mid court well, forcing Anse Young into some relatively harder defensive shots. from Shizhou Fei. Oh. over. Three, two. That really well. better start to the second game for Shizhou Fei and just favoring mid-court for our winners side of that or lifting behind That's over. and so young Four, just three. smart play that forces her into the lift herself while she hasn't had full control of the points, she's definitely found a lot more daylight by doing that. What she can't do is give full control of the point to Ansi Young because that is going to lead to 
a winner at some point. about that. Six, three. Well, it really is a trademark of the top three players. Kami Yamaguchi, Chen Yufei, and Hansa Young, but they have that ability to be able to pull out these shots, no matter what pressure's coming down on them. Rally of the match. Four, six. Very well played by both players. for Xu Jufei. Well, which Seven. means she's closed up. Oh, look at that one point difference. As I said, every point counts in this group stage. she can do about her unforced error rate right now it's gifted a few points for sure that was another one could have easily made that winner and you just can't afford unforced errors against the over class of Hansa Young that's just a fact and there's one of her own Seven. Nine. Once again, playing from that slightly driftier side of the court. That's the kind of shot that's always going to get affected by that.
inches, you think. Oh. Survives first net exchange and comes up with the winner. That was by far the best point we've seen in terms of control from the French players so far. Really well done. Not only survived that net exchange, but it was a great lift back. And then not much of a jump, but look at the twist of the body. As I said, look at the abdomen, Eight. torso, shoulder, the whole Five. twist to get the full amount of power in there. I don't think she expected that to come back. She wasn't really set up for that final shot. Eleven, eight, interval. So closer at the game interval for the second game. Still lots of work to do if she's maybe you can pull one game back for France in this women's singles third match. The Korea France tie the opening day. The group stage here at the 2023 BWF Sudim and Cup Finals. Much to do. As for Se Young, well, while she is, of course, in a commanding position in terms of the match, still Doctor, isn't quite seconds. the answer Young that two, we've seen. That, um, has just taken the world's best to the limit. And has made all these finals. Some glimpses, of course, of that quality of badminton, but 11, not quite that killer instinct that work we've seen from her before. Obviously, first match of the week, so maybe easing herself into it. Over. Nine, 11. You know what they say, problem is a necessity of all invention. She hasn't really been in trouble this game or this match, I'm so long, so doesn't really need to push herself any more than she has to. again but this time just a little bit long over. Ten, of where she is so well and twist of the wrist adds that little bit of deception before you know it Big things expected from Margot Lambert and Anne Tran. That's in the women's doubles, of course. That's the finish of the tie right now. She was lucky with that, Aung San Young. 14, 11.
playing a really smart rally as well, and she knows it. Just the quality of that shot coming back. It's just too much. And you have to feel for Shizhou Fein exchanges like that because it really is when you're playing these top players just about 15. this frustration 11. you feel well, what else can you do four points down Make that five 15, 11. running out of points here in the second game Changed her mind. Knew exactly where she was standing. That's a couple of key mistakes. 17 11 now. She's in the right place at the right time. That's a young. Good idea. Didn't make 12 17. So, 13, 17. glimmer of hope for Shizu Fei. She tries, that scoreline keeps edging towards a 2-1 lead for Korea. They're three points away now. Last nice. called in, are we gonna see a challenge? Maybe a half smile. comes back and it's was <laughs> very lucky well that was not our usual pattern of play that we've come to expect from these two ladies but it still felt that's the young's way two points now and that might just be match point it is indeed just too many errors on the day. She really gave it a good, a good try. But six match points for Ansa Young. What a defense to end it on. Just swept the shovel to the left. And in just 35 minutes, Ansa Young has given her country a 2-1 lead in the tie. Match. One by Korea, 21-7, 21-14. Not the electric, explosive answer, Young, that we've come to see, but that's the problem, I guess, when you have top, top players, especially that they're on such an amazing streak for the year. You keep expecting them to play at 
the level they play in finals, but of course it is a building process. And however she's, she's come out and whatever she did, she's delivered to her country exactly what was needed. Straight games and by a pretty high margin as well. All looking good for career in the tie. Still more to come, of course. And being the talismanic women singles proponent, more from Ansley Young as well as we move through the week. Of course, this day one of five group stage days. And up next, it's the men's doubles. Kang Min Hyuk, Seo Sung Jae against Lucas Corvey, Ronan Labar. Don't go anywhere. So back on court two, session one. It's opening day, as you can see, the fourth match of this Korea versus France tie. And it's a 2-1 lead for Korea. Kang Seo, Kang Min Hyuk and Seo Sing Jae versus Lucas Corvey and Roland Labar up next. This, of course, a must-win situation for Lucas and Ronan. Should France want to take away a win from this opening tie? And point of victory in terms of the tie itself for Kang and Seo. More action happening, of course, on courts two and three. And the players should be ready to enter the arena. Come on, Lionel, from Indonesia, Serbia, 
So here they are, the world number 16 pair from in here in Seo Sing Jae. Had a good run recently, run this up at the German Open. Those medalists at the India Open and Malaysia Open. Against the quarter finalist of the Orleans Masters. First meeting between the pairs and ready for the coin toss. So, as I said, this is going to be a tough ask for the French pairing, Corbet and Labar. They are lower ranked on paper, but now, of course, have the pressure of levelling up this tie, hoping that Margot Lambert and Anne Tran can also pull off a similar feat in the women's doubles after this. Look. 3-2 win if they can. 29 years old now. Young Paul from France is where he's from and ranked 32 in the world. Now if you rank that high world rankings then you do know the basics of what you have to do on a doubles court. Here's his partner Ronan Labar. 34 years old. Uh, Châtelet Labrie in France. 32 is their ranking as well, but as I said, they know what to do in the men's doubles. And that's about speed, tempo, precision, and of course, keeping things very, very flat over the net. Ranked 16th in the world, Seo Seng Jae, 25 years old, and John Ju in South Korea. And he knows exactly what to do. Men's doubles, it's just such a fast discipline these days, these doubles pairings just seem to get faster and faster and faster every year. Kang Min Hyuk is his partner, 24 years old, from Suwon in South Korea. And whereas there used to be more distinct roles for each of the, the pairs in a little bit like mixed doubles, in men's doubles it really is about interchangeable positions on court and the speed at which you do it as well. Defensive rotations have to be in there, of course, but if you can get your opponents, force your opponents into a lift, uh, then you get into that attacking rhythm, start firing home smashes, and of course, net exchanges, always so important, making sure you're on top of that third shot off the serve, and also looking for any opportunities you can. Ready to play. Throughout some very fast rallies, very difficult discipline to keep. Or ranking in. Jiten Bart is our umpire for this one. Joined by our service judge, Bert van Horenbeek. That's why you can see doubles partnerships, especially their rankings just yo yo as they move around. The classic example, of course, the current world champions, Aaron Chow and So Yik. We've been having a bit of trouble keeping up to that world number two ranking late. In fact, I, I do believe they've dropped recently because of their relatively sluggish start to 2023. It's very difficult to keep on top of the game. But now, pressure's on. For Korea, they're looking for a 3-1 win. For France, level it up at 2-2 in the tie. Try and push for their own decider. So whereas we're all usually Ladies watching for and gentlemen, deciding on my games. Right, France represented by Luca Corbet and Ronan Labar. 
and on my left, Korea, represented by Kan Min Hyuk and Seo Sung Jae. France to serve, Ronan Laba, Seo Sung Jae, level play. Well, we're underway, and as I was saying, well, most of the time we're looking for deciding games and matches. Now, France will be looking for a deciding match. Seven the over, tie. one love. Just a reminder though, in the group stage, all matches do get played for statistical purposes and just in case any two teams are tied for qualification at the end of the week, they will be differentiated by the amount of games won, and the games lost, points won, points lost. And that can be very important. Good lead for the Koreans off the start. It's good hustling from the French. It's great hustling. La Bar, especially. Oh, oh, the lift came early in the point. And from Jay, who was at the end of it. No, it was Khan. I mean, yep. That's why you have to keep it flat. Good rotation for Sio. Just could make the finishing touch on that move. So important with the speed of the rallies that all areas of the court get covered. And so having these rotations between the players, very difficult to do with speed, obviously, but so important. from oh, it's Corve this ball, time. Ball. Just at the right time as well. Ties it up at four apiece. I think the Korean pair have realized the height advantage that their opponents have, and that's why they're going to be trying to play mid-court, front-court to the feet, having to make Corvée and Laval work for each of these 
recoveries and defences. Got to get down low. But so far, hasn't been working in their favour. It's tied up at five apiece. themselves really well so far that slight mistake but neither pair have had more than a two-point lead and most of those have come way of Kung and Seo there's a big lift or oh, Corvey just feeding Seo Seng Jae at the moment Kang Min Hyuk just lucky in the net, just ready to finish that off. But I guess that's all Kobe could do. That's what's so important, doubles. of having that extra height advantage you really get those steep angles it's something that uh, Chirag and Shetty the names right now in men's doubles have been doing to their credit that we've seen that's just a testament mark of exactly how competitive the men's doubles portion of this tie has been Well, as they approach the mid-game interval, I have to say that right now, not much separating these two pairs and in terms of world ranking. Well, that looks like it's out the window. I think the pressure of winning for both of these pairs is pushing them through a little bit more. So they're giving a little bit more extra. Again, good hustling. And not into that oh. interval just yet. Fully deserved, by the way, that scoreline based on what we've seen. Over. 
But when it does come, and the points always do come, it falls away of the Koreans. Oh, just listening to some of the coach advice. And it really is just all about those exchanges over the net. Just playing back on, forcing, holding the line until one of the four players is absolutely forced to lift. Maintaining the speed and tempo, obviously. Turn just wide. for a start to the second part of this first game three straight points for Corvain Labar have their biggest lead of the game so far that is over 12 13 it never seems to move more than two points right now Stake at the net from Corvey. Court. You see him there at the back, and he comes forward and he moves over. That's what I mean about court coverage. And he's done that very, very well. The full rotation, of course, the other player coming moving to the other side. So there's always one attacking hand covering the space. Absolutely level pegged. 
Rally's much, much quicker Luka. and shorter now. You're Nothing pass, okay? really developed in the last Wait. six points. All four players is rushing to cover that shuttle. It's good rotation by the French there as well. Oh, not fully though. 15, 14. It was Labar that was caught. It's great from Corvey. It was Labar, in fact, that was caught. Thank you, players. Delicate from Sio at the net. Oh, this is great stuff from the Koreans. 16, 14. Just when they needed to step into an extra gear, you just saw it in that point. Develop rally. Sio Sing Jae doing most of the work, but when Kang did come in, he stepped in just the right shot. Well, thank you, Blair. 16 14 Wow, Kang Min Hyuk did everything but win that point. It's over. 15, 17. It's been great. Last couple of points, they've really stepped into a different gear. If you look at some of the shots that Kang Min Hyuk played here, just that last one, flip the take. The rest of them were instinctive. Reverse place, shots. Yep. Mid-court, front-court, back-court, you name it. That's gone in. No challenge 16, coming. 17. And that's a fighting chance for Corvain Labar. That's clearly in. How privileged. All of us are and have the benefits of that camera. Low angle camera on the baseline. Not to mention, of course, the sterling work done by all the line judges, officials in Hawkeye, as you'd expect. Of this one of the top tournaments of the year. All of those provisions are state of the art. Just enough done by Sio Sung Jae. 18, 16. Edging towards his first game win. Delayed, yes, thought as much. There's a certain rhythm to the service action. You can't be delaying that at all. It's a warning. So high. That lift from Corvey was almost orbital. I don't think Kang and Sio were expecting something that high after the quality of the game we've seen so far. But Closing in, what a time to craft out a three-point lead. Oh. 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 Just 
just like that. Good burst from Kang and Xiao, and they've got themselves four well-earned game points. Well, hats off to Corvain Labar for what they've been doing. Just that extra bit of craft from Kang and Xiao have given them this chance. Oh, unanswered. How about that? Right down the middle. So, 21-16. In 20 minutes. of that scoreline. Half the job done. And Korea now one game away from of course taking this tie. Just to stress and remind you, of course, that women's doubles will be played out. Regardless, but it will be an unassailable lead if Kang and Seo can Stay in that extra gear that we saw in the second game. It makes sense. Yeah. So we not just play a good one and then step a bit too much back and then they can actually have a good action and then we can also have a good one. Great chat. Yeah. Just get an inkling there as to the, the kind of detail that the teams and the coaches and the players work in. And it's so wonderful to watch from the outside the fluidity of the point and the rallies. They're watching every second. Great insight into the, second game. into the match. Level. in that point and just got the feeling that Corvain Labar when they were handed the attack they started putting enough pressure down Xiao and Kang were just a bit stuttering on their movement and when you're thinking about these things that's when these errors will come in group stages all the matches get played out for stats but well, I can tell you that that's already been put in effect on court three makes you a four nil up against Australia perfect score for them so far electric pace to this rally as well and in the end it's Xiao Seng Jay with the body oh. shot to Labar. Too much. 
Well, it's another time warning. Three, Actually, it's more of a time speaking to. It's not an official warning just yet. And now just telling them all that they have to get ready a lot quicker. Very fast, very aggressive play from the Korean pair so far. holding your ground in front court, right in front of the net. Just powering in these drives, first to the body, and then to the open space on the right. So it's been a good run for Kang and Sierra of late. Second of the German Open, and a couple of thirds in the Open and Malaysia Open, so they've it been getting better. No surprise they're included. It's the men's doubles part of this team. Well, the net can be so cool sometimes. Quick wipe and set back. Unfortunate. Intercepted Six, in midair. Left it too high and he knows it. Again. This time defended well. himself with his own racket. He knows that was a pretty good channel of space down that side. The idea was very good. Just couldn't clear the tape. So Carlos Hill again. Well I was about to say again. Increasing their lead, but that hasn't happened. Yeah, it's over. 
9-7. Now Corvain and Labar just have to calm themselves down a tiny bit. Don't lose the intensity of the point or the attack. But they have to. Just saw there his footing was the real cause for that. Easy kill for Labar. in on the second mid-game interval. And once again, Kang and Sio have just moved into this extra gear and maintained this two-point lead and are looking good for the Interval and of course for the second part of this second game. So important to have that extra gear of speed. So far. Business end of this second game. What could mean the point of no return for Korea in terms of winning the tie? Great defense for a second in the middle of the We thought. Kang and Seal were going to come through that point, but Nine, I don't 11. even think they knew where the shuttle was at some point. It's just instinctive returns. And I guess you could say that that's not going to happen forever. It's wonderful defending on show for sure. They have to, well, I was just about to say, they have to block out all of the cheers coming from the other courts. Looked like that one did sneak in. Snow Becerra on serve for Kang and Sio, 12 turn up. took his eye off the shuttle. Some say that's what I mean about how fast these rallies are. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often. Oh, 
great return from Corvey. 12-0. Important point as well. joins his compatriot two really important points they've clawed it back and they now edge ahead can they force a deciding game here match four this opening tie group d Korea versus france remember we'll have a complete idea at the end of this first day as to what group d looks like Japan and England are facing off later on Japan also another another nation that has yet to win the Sudirman Cup amazingly they've been runner-up on a number of occasions with some good form and their players as well for this group. challenge coming in Challenge eagle eyes. Um, I think it was Labar that time. It's a great exchange over the net. Well, it's got to be rally of the match for me so far. In the end, one right down the middle by the French. But what exchange around the net. Fast and flat. Bar showing that can't just spot in and out the line. It's got big spaces right down the middle as well. Two point lead, amazing performance since the mid break. And there's confirmation of that being the longest rally. 39 shots. Well, oh, how about this? And they were behind the game interval, three points ahead. Well, we've seen Kang and Xiao activate their extra gear. They did it in the first game. The question is, can they do it again? It's been very much a straight games affair. We've lost, of course, two games to France in the men's singles, but apart from that, it was two games. Mixed doubles, two games of the women's singles. Good progression throughout the time. Oh, 
running away with it right now. The French pep. Commanded well, controlled well by Corbin and Labar. Four point lead, two needed. Get themselves right back in this match. This might be, in the second game, the last chance for Kang and Sio to claw their way back. Based on the last few points, it might be difficult to do. Energy, good spirit, good hustling by Corbet and Labar. Get themselves back in it. Remember, they were down at the mid game interval for the second game. So they really pulled out all the stops. surprised if Kang and Sio could rescue this second game. Thank you, players. now how difficult it is to win each of these points. That's another game point saved. Another point, force extra points. No, they can't. It's definitive from Corbin Labar. One game all. And so for the first time, France have forced a deciding game in this tie. And of course, their chances of winning the whole tie massively improved. Very often, it's the half court you play, the good agreement there. Can a bit more variation, but more soft, OK? Mm -hmm. uh, no, none of them are pushing out the so. And still be a bit dirty and use the flick, too. You see, you have a lot of success with that one, and continue to do it. Um, where did we score our last point? Interesting words once again. It just goes to show you that if you listen to your coaches, things can change very quickly in a match. Yeah. 
제, 쟤네들은 지금 치고 치고 받고 들어오는 게 익숙해져 있는데 우리가 계속 싸움을 한단 말이야. 한 번씩 풀려도 우리가 조금 더 이거 생제나 풀지면 안 돼요. Quite rethinking of the strategy, I think. The French pair have obviously found their own second gear. So it's not just a question of speeding it up at the net. But one thing Kang and Seo have shown is a lot of variety at the net. They really do know how to display the shots left and right and at speed. It can be very distracting for the opponents, and that's worked quite well for them. So, third and deciding game to... In the case of France, anyway, force a fifth and deciding match to pick a winner here in this tie. Paul there in the bar can pull this off. It'll be 2-2 in the tie. Which France will be very, very happy with. Not just because they have the chance to make it 3-2, of course, but in terms of what they can take away from day one. Opening tie. Oh. Now it's got some sting in it. Immediate challenge. Looked fine. Here it comes. Oh, I think that's a bad. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. That's in. And that's in One by a fair margin. Play. Just too much power on it. Racing off to a 3-1 lead, but as we've seen, as we saw in that second game, this two-point lead, three-point lead, don't seem to have the same amount of effect as they used to. Overturned quite convincingly by Corvain Labar. Second half of the second game. thinking that they have conceded that second game. Play. So maybe they're going to try and win this by a huge margin if they can. Close, not quite close enough. Five two on serve. Oh, he knew when he had 
to scramble back. That was going to be a very, very difficult shot. Four-point lead. This might equal the biggest that we've seen in this match. Outside, like an outside flick of the wrist. <laughs> Too delicate. And we heard his coach telling him just three. in the break there that he should try the soft hands at the nets. Did, but that was just a little bit too soft. 7 3. Good rotation by Kang and Sio. Pulling out all the stops here in this third game. There's that rotation. Kang moving into the back court. Sio just moving forward and to the right. of space found. Nine, three. Well, this is definitely the biggest lead that we've seen all match. Just look at the amount of space. It's another great defensive movement from the Koreans and it just outfox the French enough to leave that space on well, to the Koreans on the left side to us on the right. Now this is Great buffer. Oh. Didn't even have to look back. Corvey and Labar have some serious thinking to do. You could almost say that Kang and have moved into an extra gear, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Top double sides can progressively get faster. Unlucky in that time. Got a chance now for Corvey and Labar to he's cut back into this. Oh, pretty huge lead. Guys from the back follows it up with the power. And Sio is there to kill it to the ground. 11 4, biggest mid game interval differential we've seen in the match. And 55 minutes played on court so far. You have to say the Koreans have moved into yet another gear. What they need to do, they deliver. And that's what it's all about. It is a tough group with Japan also in the group, so really, as I said, dropping games like that second game for them it was not ideal, but it is badminton and that happens. And they know that as professionals, they're going to move on from it. But if it came down to it, Great performance from 
France or England, for example. In many ways against the form book, but came down to that one game. Just can't take the chance. Have to go for straight games wins if you can. Coming in so fast with him. from the hip defending. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Hats off to Sung Jae Sung Jae for holding his ground, keeping the pressure on. Mag starts here. will just settle their nerves a bit. Oh. Ruining themselves 14, for that. Seven. for Kang and Sio. Just elevated themselves enough to break down the rhythm of Corvain Labar. Set up this buffer of eight points. Set us over. Eight, 15. Oh, marks down. beginning to creep onto the faces of the French pair. And they're still battling away. Play on both sides of the net has broken down somewhat. Expect from the frenetic pace of the first two games that they had to take a bit of a lull at some point. That's great play from the bar.
mistakes creeping into the Korean side. And before you know it, look at how that lead is being cut into. Well, are we in for a grandstand finish here in the third and deciding game? The fourth match, this opening tie. Sudirman well, Cup, over. Group D. 17-12. The momentum lost. Important serve for Kang. Wow. Use of the flick serve and used it well. Under serious pressure here. Set it over. 13, 18. <laughs> Just a couple of lengths have gone long. Just crossed the hour mark. Duration on court. Very high from Labar. So it's over. 19 13. I think he knew how high that was. It was always going to come back with interest. Straight to the body. Interesting to note, Kang is here just in a, in a half crouch, just ready to pick up the shuttle. Really low. So, seven match points. Seven chances for Korea to take this win. How important it is to have that buffer that they built up at the beginning of the match or the beginning of this third game? It was cut into, yes, and at one point it even got down to two, but still enough in the tank to pull it up and bring it to this exact point, which is exactly where they want to be. I have to say, even with these mistakes being committed now, can't see. Kang and Sio not converting one of the remaining five match points. Oh. Challenge being called there. That's, that's a very dramatic shot indeed. Looked in. From up here. And it is. Absolutely no question in that shot. What a key point to win. Challenge at match point. Successful. And the comeback, if it is one. Continues. Another mistake. 17, 20. Three match points saved. Three to go. Make that four match points saved. Well. 
You have to walk back exactly what I said, maybe. Kang and Seo. I just can't see Kang and Seo wanting to have to explain to their teammates how they managed to lose six match points. stuff unbelievable even with a broken racket oh this might turn out to be headline of the morning if Kang and Xiao drop six match points force extra points on this all crucial match four that could tie up France 2-2 You couldn't even write that stuff. I'm you, really, it's unbelievable. Let's just see what they can do. So, Corvain Labar on serve. One more match point to save before it goes to extra points. Oh, oh so much was riding on that one point. The nerves were too much for them. 21 19. And Korea, on paper anyway, wins the tie 3-1. And we'll see whether it's going to be a 4-1 win or a 3-2 win. And the women's doubles 16, 18, coming up. 21, 21, 19. What an effort from Corvey and Labar to not only force the third deciding game, but then to save five match points out of six right at the end. There's confirmation of that score. Do stick with us. More of us, more to come, obviously. And Kang and Xiao are going to have to deal with the fact that the stats of that match, which they were in control of for most of it, kind of went out the window when they lost that second game. So they conceded a lot of points. They've conceded a game not exactly what was on the plan but at least they came through with the win so many boxes to tick well, once again i guess it is the start of the week and there's still plenty more badminton to come for both teams as they navigate their way through group d Still, of course, one match left. While I have the time, I'll just update you that you can see court three is empty there. That's because Malaysia did run out 5-0 winners over Australia. Absolute clean sheet for them. Still to come here on court two. We have the final match of this time. That's it. Women's doubles, Kim and Kong versus Lambert and Tran. Don't go anywhere.
So back on court two here at the uh, Suzhou Olympic Sports Center. And as you can see, it's four of five matches in this first tie between Korea and France in Group D that have uh, already taken place. 3-1 winners of the tie, Korea, but are they going to uh, just expand that win to 4-1 or can France get one match back and make this tie score 3-2? Kim so Young and Kong Hee Young versus Margot Lambert and Anne Tran is up next. <laughs> Lambert and Antran are definitely well known on the BWF World Tour, but so are Kim and Kong, the current All England champions. Quarterfinals of the Malaysian Open, ready for the coin toss here. Also third at the German Open, and that was their last meeting at the French Open last year. Kim and Kong coming through, easy winners there. Very powerful pair, Kim and Kong. And Korea have left them as women's doubles, even though, as we saw earlier, they've got Lee So Hee and Baek Ha Na as their cover for doubles. A strong women's doubles department, very strong doubles department in general for Korea every time. And this is going to be a tough ask for the world number 28s, Lambert and Tran. Who oh, are yet to get past the second round, actually, this year. There's Kim So Young, 30 years old now, in Daegu in Korea. Currently ranked fifth, but as you can see, this pair has been undisputed world number ones. Kong Hee Young, 26 years old now. Same ranking, obviously, having played together for so long. Important to have that chemistry and to understanding of what your player can do, what your partner can do, sorry. I'm trying 27 years old. And as you can see, they're ranked 28 currently, which is respectable, but haven't had the best of 2023s. Or at least still getting started with it, I think. But yet to get past the second round, and I think it's uh, four or five tournaments. 24-year-old Margot Lambert. And uh, Giron Grange in France, and 28 ranked, of course. But they lost to the Stoeva sisters at the uh, European Mixed Team Championships, and Effler and Lohau, the German pairing. As I said, France won the four European teams to make it through anyway. And that was round robin losses for the girls. Now it's about consolation. And of course, I like to call it insurance. Just in case, if Antrine and Margot Lambert can upset the form book here, get themselves, well, ideally a straight games win, it's going to help. their chances anyway. Umpire for this one, Mansoure Salat Jachia. Service judge joining her, Henrik Boris Olsen. Both of them very much in charge of court two this morning. And thank them as always for their service and efforts. Coaches ready, players ready. Fans always ready. Fans here in Suzhou in China have been waiting for many months, I can tell you. This is actually the first major badminton event to be held in China for three years. And it's a big landmark after the challenges of the pandemic, for example. And it's good to see so many people here turned out and ready to go. And it's just day one of eight days of competition. Ladies and 
gentlemen. On my right, Hans, represented by Hans Hans and Margot Lambert. And on my left, Korea, represented by Kwon Ki Young and Kim So Young. Korea to serve Kim So Young to Hans Hans. Lovell, play. So, ready to get underway. from Kevin Cog, not really encouraging, but just warming up, I'm sure. Feel good for Kim and Kong, knowing that the tie is already won. They're not risking anything here. Challenge called Out. early in this fifth match. Every point counts. That one. One early lead for Kim and Kong. But it hasn't been as one-sided as you'd think. Definitely not reflective of that scoreline. Great speed and understanding by Kim and Kong, and that's what makes him such a good pair. That's why they went as high as world number one as well. trying their hardest to break into this rhythm and cut into the rallies. Good work 
rotation there. Kim coming forward. There we go. Kong. Just great court coverage from the Koreans. confused as to how she had that fly. Fifty three shot longest rally benchmark set for seven points blades. Lombe and Tran have to, if they can, what they do is really try and pull in these unforced errors. Kim Min Kong again, another pairing that you just don't want to gift free points to. They'll sit back, they'll soak them up, and then they'll also start delivering the winners. And before you know it, it's going to be too much of a gap between you two. They'll pull together. Difficult just to say to someone, stop making the unforced errors, but it's a good movement there from Lambert to move forward. Oh, nicely read oh, from So Young. A wealth of riches in doubles, Korea. Four-time winners of the Sudirman Cup itself. And I wonder if this wealth of doubles riches this year is going to help propel them to a fifth. I mean, that's a big thing to proclaim at the beginning on the opening day, of course. But Korea, Japan, China have all been performing so well of late recent tournaments they're definitely the ones on fire so it's not that far off to suspect that that might be three of the four semi-finalists right there and so we'll have to wait and see over the next six days as Kim and Kong are one point away from the first mid-game interval here in this women's doubles closing match of this time No discernible problems for Kim and Kong so far. Okay, 
Nine minutes that first game is taken. First half game. First exchange of points. Second half of the game coming up now. As I said, they have attacked well. They've defended well enough. They've also benefited from a few mistakes from their opponents. So they've kept their own unforced errors down to a minimum. Great from Lombard. Held the ground well. Six, eleven. Just too long from Chan. Just the way she was moving around the court. Increased effort coming from the French pair, but right now it's still a very nice buffer indeed for the Koreans. And I think, as I said, one of the main factors for that has got to be that they know the pressure's off in terms of winning the overall tie. It really is about pride now. Steamrolling through their way. And you see. Venom coming off the racket of Kong Hee Young. All smiles. Exactly the game that they were looking to put down on paper so far. The fact she kept that too long. Reverse interception. 
and Tron at the net. Moves in nicely, sees her opportunity, fills it, made sure to keep that angle as steep as possible as well. Could have so easily gone long. Great example once again of how you can't be, or hopefully, you can't be committing unforced errors at this rate, this frequency. Now, if your question is, well, what is the frequency of unforced errors? Obviously, it's one every ten points, I, I would say. That should generally get you through championship quality game. But that is asking a lot of these, even these modern players that with amazing skills and amazing uh, physical attributes. One mistake every 10 points, that's a lot to ask. I think two or three, 30% unforced error rate, that's probably a little bit more realistic. And it'll still push you along in terms of points. Again, set with herself. Good stand so far from the French pair. This is some great defense from them. Well, they really pulled out all the stops. Got to give them credit for that. That, I'm guessing, has to be the longest rally of the match so far. It's got to top that 53 benchmark that they set up early on in the first game. And there you go. Oh, well, no. So her internal clock counter is off there. 47 shots close. That's seemed a lot longer there's a lot of power in that rally but some great defensive work from, from the two French ladies that's with an air of inevitability I guess match point 12 of them oh sorry game point 12 of them and they only needed the first one so 21 8 after 18 minutes and Korea looking good for the 4-1 win at this point But I think we can take some encouragement by the defending, especially from Lombard and Tran in the, at the end of that first game. And you just think that if they can keep that fight going, then perhaps they can still make something of this final game. This final match, I should say, in the tie. Nobody knows what's going to happen later on in the week. So, I said, if you can't win the tie, then make sure you can take something back from it.
work hard and keep the good discipline like we talked about in the beginning of the match. Okay? Yeah, come on. How are they going to attack the second game? Good aggressive start to the second game. Players, play more sharp before line that signal, okay? One love. How you do it? Out foxed Kim So Young that time. First time we've seen one of the Korean players really having to struggle to recover that. Great shot by from Lambert. And maybe Kim So Young <laughs> took her eye off the shuttle just for a second. A bit of complacency, possibly. done from Kong Hee Yong. So much pressure coming in from the Koreans, but they lose the point in the most artistic fashion. If you look at the way they finish the point, double stretching. Such a passage of pressure and play from them, which was soaked up by the French pair and returned to all. in the second game. Difficult over. angle to return Three. from.
inches long. Great idea once again from Lambert. to the playbook Kim So Young just at the times when you really need to edge ahead create a bit of a buffer when things are getting a bit tight and in fact I think that's the first time well they've definitely seen a challenge in the second game that they're playing a bit more competitive Change Kong saw the opening to ground. She never snatches at it. Some ambitious defending. Margot Lambert knew that with that just that last defensive block. Oh. Buffer in the second game now being created. There and a chance on serve for Norman Tran. Defensive work from Antran. And that cheer following that shot is actually for the Chinese Taipei versus India Thai, but it was perfectly timed for a really great move from Antran. It's one of the point as well. So on serve 5-9. French ladies need this second game to kind of force a decider. By doing so, of course, they're going to upset Korea's um, data record, their stat record from this opening tie, while, of course, increasing their own. And that's all they can take right now after losing the tie already. 
so it works in their favor to win this second game. on the defensive at now but as you can see just keep you updated on that it's actually four nil now Chinese Taipei versus India I think four one so five nil for Malaysia four nil for Chinese Taipei and well either four one or three two for Korea Comfortable buffer for Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young. Core 2, 20 seconds. Core 2, 20 seconds. But we've seen a lot more fight, a lot more spirit. More Bear and Tran in the second game. It's good to be a responsive pair. 11, 6. World Tour. Oh, Ben Tran. Opportunistic. Seven, eleven. Intercepted the pattern of play. Found a space. Late save from Tran. Oh, great pressure from Tran again. Eight, eleven. Providing the spark here in this mini comeback. Just there, took up position. And on serve. Oh, open court. Service over. Now I wonder if that's down to a little bit of complacency from Kim and Kong. They don't usually leave that amount of space wide open. Have a look at this. I mean they're both basically pretty vertical. That's the exact formation you don't need to be in. One player standing in front of another one. You're not covering anything except well, each other's backs, I guess. It needs to have lateral motion always. Service fault there. And that's why you get those rotating circles in defense. And not one player ever standing right in front of another one. Which is exactly what Kim and Kong just did. And what's worse, they did it on the right side. They left pretty much half the court open. 14, nine. You know, while I've been explaining that, a couple of service errors or non-starter points. And it's five point lead for Kim and Kong and seven needed to win this match. And of course, close out the tie.
将由来自中华台北的李嘉欣、邓卓君对阵来自印度的乔伊·戈里昌德。为此，节目组将由主办方李嘉欣、邓卓君对阵。Right into the corner. Absolutely no stopping that. From the umpire once again is playing at the edge of their limits right now. Okay, thank you. And while they can take some satisfaction from definitely scoring more points in this second game, they would love to cut into that five-point lead. Now, Wide. So Kim and Kong three points away now from the match. Huge smash from Lombard. Left so high. to so much power put into that irretrievable so, so I was just about to say that it would be unlikely for Lombain trying to claw back the seven points but then of course we did just see the compatriots Corvée and Labar save five match points of six. mental prospect to close out the match maybe a little bit nervous in the head plus having to deal with this extra pressure coming in from the French pair Set it very wide from Lombard. So, match point. Match point. 
six. In fact. One saved. I wonder if they're going to do do a corvée in Labar. Maybe that's what it'll be known as from now on. He had to save six, they save five. So much saved, but that one just got converted by Kim and Kong. And so, with that, they needed a second one in the end. It is a four two four one win for Korea and it's a 21-8, 21-16 win for Kim and Kong. 21-8, we'll Just hear the umpire confirming that scoreline. Good performance all in all as their opening salvo in terms of the tie. Individual glory of course for some of these big Korean stars. There is confirmation of the Results, 21-8, 21-16 in just under 45 minutes. Good performance for them to build on for the rest of the week, of course. And as you do know, Group D has only just started. Group C and D and A actually in action today in this morning session. So looking at the results, this is the results from the Korea France tie of straight games for Kim Won Ho and Jong Na An. It was then straight games the other way for Christo Popov in the men's singles. That made it 1 1. An Se Young came in and delivered her points uh, effectively and efficiently after that against Shi Ju Fei. And uh, that was followed, of course, by the men's doubles Kang Min Hyuk and Seo Sung Jae, the only Korean pair to drop a game against Corvey and Labar. That made it 3 1. And then the final match, well, that was Kim and Kong with straight games win, effective, efficient, and that makes it 4-1 win for Korea in this opening tie, Group D. Don't forget, that was this morning's session. Later on today, 1700 local time, Denmark versus Singapore, that's a Group A match. Oh, don't forget to catch that. Well, right now, it's a goodbye from me. And of course, do stay with us to catch all the action from the Sudirman Cup Finals 2023.